Hey, welcome to Birdscraft. Today I'll make this. Some kind of a tube entrance with engraved tiles here on the front that can be used as traps or puzzles. Well, now let's take a look at how to make this. Alright, let's begin. For this diorama I'll make a non-peasant level base, as promised. The material I'm using is hardboard, I got cheap from the hardware store. All of this was like 5 euros, the only problem was getting it home. You should have seen me biking with these under my arm, that was beautiful. Anyway, now that I got the hardboard into workable size, I plan the size of my terrain. Introducing the plan. Here will be the building working as a dungeon entrance. Stairs up to the roof and strange puzzle tiles that are the only way to get inside. Then I finish off the plan with a big question mark to leave some room for further imagination. For cutting this I don't think I have the perfect saw but it is fine, the edges didn't get too rough. After all I got it sawed quite nicely. Then I finished the shape and edges with the kitchen knife, of course. Works for cardboard so why not hardboard as well. Using the knife I was also able to round the edges quite nicely. Talking about cardboard, I made the foundation of the building from cardboard. I measured the height and then cut out this long strip. By the way, the names on the knife are not people I intended to kill, so don't worry. They are patrons, many of which are new and I'd like to thank them. Thank you for the help, the journey continues. Next I need my glue gun. To make the wall I bent the cardboard piece like this and then hot glued it in place. I admit that was not my first attempt. Yeah, then I glued in these small pieces and left room for a giant door. Okay, the inside of the building will be inaccessible but slightly visible. So I cut out a cardboard piece for the roof then painted the inside black, so I don't have to worry about that later. And then I glued in the roof. Already looking dark and mysterious, good. After that I continued by making the stone tiles on the ground. I cut the XPS foam into a thin slice first and then I cut the shape of the tiles. I think that 12 tiles should be good enough, although I'd like to make the base larger now, to fit more. Well, that's too late. Anyway, next I texture the tiles with aluminum foil. And also made these small cuts here and there. I'll still carve in some symbols on them later, but for now, gluing them in place is enough. While those dried, I made the stairs on the sides. I quickly cut a stair shape from foam, textured it and then carved in tiles and stones. I carved the stones first with a blade, then using a pencil. Or a pen. What? Which one was it? Pretty good. I also made sure to count in the thickness of the stones of the walls. I'll add next. So I wanted the stonework to look strange, not just regular bricks. This is what I did. From a suitably thin sheet I got these kind of triangular shapes that fit together on the side of the walls. 
I think these look good, and as a bonus, these are actually easier to cut than regular bricks. Also, since they are quite large, gluing is quick. I decided it is easier to glue these on before texturing, so I don't mess up the fitting. Doesn't matter, you'll see me doing that soon. When doing the corners, you can also be fancy and interlock the pieces like this. And here, I just fit a piece over the stairs and started gluing. Then, as expected, I forgot the arrangement, so I simply checked back on my footage and tried again. I was happy until I noticed a mistake. The higher step becomes too narrow. That won't work. I tore away the stairs and fixed the problem. Okay, that looks good. Now we just finish the opposite side. The front, and then let's do something with these leftovers. I continued by cutting more of the similar shapes, textured them, and then placed them behind the building. In between these, I think I'll place a tree later. Yeah, that'll work. At this point, I also decided to apply textures on all of the wall stones. The glue had dried well enough. Up here on the roof, I wanted something more. I made more of the pieces and glued them on with barbecue sticks. Things like these are just what you need to place on your terrain to make it stand out. Especially when building mysterious fantasy terrain, you can get away with anything. Make things strange, edgy, and it will just look good. Well, most of the time. Okay, next I continued with the symbols for the tiles. I took a new blade for my exacto knife before cutting. After some confusion, I got it. No bleeding. This does cut really well. I gently cut the shape of my spearhead symbol and then removed foam from the middle. Hmm, now that's a bit messy, but okay though. The next one is a bit better. I was able to slice off a layer of foam for a cleaner carving. Then the rest are made in the same way. Besides the spearhead, I'll make a claw symbol and a snake symbol. Before the players arrive on this site, they'll get hints of these symbols. The key to entering the tomb of the ancients is hidden in plain sight and probably soluble for a toddler. Yep, here all of the symbols are done. The last snake became a bit derpy. Definitely don't step on that one. Now let's do the door. The door is also made of peculiar interlocking stone slabs, connected by barbecue sticks, remnants of an ancient technology. Got my pieces, now let's see how these go on. Hmm, perhaps not. I wanted a larger gap so that the dark of the room would be visible. Aha, I bent the door, causing it to look half collapsed. Perhaps someone has tried to break in, but the magical seal of the door was too strong. Once I got it in place, I applied glue wherever I could get it nicely, and then admired this for a while. Not bad. Okay, two more things before calling it a day trees. I glued in these beginnings of trees, one between the stones and another on top of the overgrown roof. These are just sticks I gathered from the woods. Then I added the ground textures and a few ruined tiles. Let's rewind a bit. This morning I went out on my walk, equipped with a plastic bag. I grabbed the sand and sterilized it in the oven. Then the sand and stones are attached with a healthy overflowy amount of PVA glue. For me, this will be a good test to see if the hardboard resists warping. Here I was careful not to get glue on my precious symbol tiles. On the contrary, it is totally fine to get sand on the walls. I even filled some corners with extra too much glue and then added more sand. 
it will look more natural when the walls are kind of sticking out from the earth. All done, now I just let the glue dry overnight. The next morning I removed any loose sand and made sure everything is solidly in place. The sand stays on very well, it's hard to even tear off the half attached bits. The base also is completely flat, very good. I cleaned up the mess and then went out to prime everything with a black spray. I sprayed carefully in order to avoid melting the foam, keeping the can at a distance and applying thin layers. Then I sprayed a bit from the top in order to highlight some of the details of the terrain. Perhaps a bit too much, but I thought this looked quite promising already. Alright, painting. First I'll paint the ground in my newfound favorite way. I mixed a dark brown and diluted it a bit with water, then I applied it on most of the surfaces. I have always been uncertain about painting the ground, but no more. This method results in good looking ground even without grass flocking. Next I'll add green to make a greenish brown. I applied this color on about half of the ground, making sure it transitions nicely from brown to green brown. Later I'll also dry brush with a tan on some parts. Before that I painted the stonework. First I covered everything with a thin diluted layer of a tan color. When painting the tiles I made sure to not get any into the symbols. Then I made a wash from brown and black and applied it generously on the stonework. It may look that this is too much, very true, but my improvised plan was to remove some of the wash using toilet paper. In this way I can get lighter surfaces on the highlights and on the top parts of the walls, kind of like peasant level reverse highlighting. You can also let the wash flow down naturally and then work it slightly with your paper or fingers. When working on the tiles I let the wash flow into the symbols completely and then messily removed extra wash from the top surface. Yeah, this worked better than expected, good. I finished the rest in the same way and then I switched to a darker wash. The darker one is mostly used to make the flowy thingies. Now that I think of it I could have made the wash darker in the first place. Well, now you know. Besides being quick, this method of painting terrain is very forgiving. When you mess around with the diluted paints you'll get nice transitions and you'll automatically cover bad spots. Ok, moving on. Next I dry brushed the stonework with a tan. Drake tooth. As usual I hit mostly on the edges. I also re-highlight some of the edges with more paint for great effect. Some of this paint can also be applied on the ground. If you go for a more dark and gloomy theme, the terrain would almost be done by now. However, I go for bright and colorful, so I apply plenty of grass flocking. For this build I had to make more of my grass flocking. Usually I have cut up the hemp rope with a pair of scissors, however some of you suggested the use of a trimmer so I tried it. Worked ok, in the end I think I saved some time using it. With a decent one I'm sure you'll make lots of flocking in no time. I then added some green and started mixing. 
By the way, if you make this flock, you'll surely get clumps as I do. Keep them, they can be used as somewhat okay bushes and foliage for trees. Okay, as usual, the flock is applied with glue. I sprinkle it on either using a small sieve that I got specifically for the purpose, or then I just place it with my fingers. For me, flocking is the most fun step. You can play around and apply it on stairs, the wall, and hide mistakes. Anyway, this is how it looks once the glue is dried. I had some leftover undead bits from my Frostgrave cultists that can be used here. I quickly base coated skulls, hands, an axe, and this potion thingy. Then I snapped the bits off and looked for good spots to place them. First, the skeletal hands. I thought it looks cool when they are kind of reaching out from the tomb. Who knows what's sealed inside? A skull goes here, indicating the danger of the puzzle, and the other one goes on top of the roof. Along with that, I also super glued in the skull and bottle. Here, some cultist must have met his ultimate demise. I'll make sure to add some blood later. Okay, once the glue had dried, I coated all of the little bits with strong tone wash. For terrain, this level of detail is good enough. I also used this wash to touch up some areas. For example, I applied it in the inner corners to make them look darker. I had some painting left, so I got that out of the way before any final touches. Brown for the trees and a bit of red on the severed arm. Hmm, that's a bit questionable. Well, moving on. I made the moderately peasant level trees next. The flocking clumps are simply glued on with lots of PVA glue. The pathetic battery of the camera ran out before I was able to make the trees. I sprayed on more PVA glue and sprinkled on flocking. Now I think the trees are quite good. Next I did some final dry brushing or edge highlights on the outmost edges of the building. I painted the corners, door pieces and the railing bits. While at it, I also made sure to brush some on the miniature bits. Then, to bring everything together, I worked with the flesh wash. I basically add this everywhere. Well, not quite. Mainly, this makes the stone structures look awesome when it's applied around the lower parts. Also, transitions from grass to ground become twice as beautiful. So this type of brown weathering was first introduced to me by Jacob. He has used brown pigments instead for greater weathering effect. I'll have to get pigments at some point for weathering such as this. I consider simple weathering as one very good terrain painting hack. Additionally, I placed on some more loot I found on another spruce. Here I'd like to inform you that this diorama is for sale on my website, along with other terrain. Now let's take a look at this while we immerse ourselves. Through suffering and bravery have our paths led us to this final struggle. Traps we have sprung, beasts we have slain, and now we are here at the tomb of the ancients. Long have the lizardmen tribes safeguarded this sacred site, but now it is subject to a ruthless plunder. Brothers, now we will sacrifice ourselves one by one until this door opens. For the master we rise, for the master we die. Those are some very loyal cultists. I hope you have enjoyed the video. If so, do subscribe, like, and I'll see you in the next one.